Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 6, NCRT. Chapter 6 Major Landforms of the Earth As the word indicates landforms, it means land formation. So this chapter is all about major land formations of the earth. In page 1, we will read about how landforms are a result of two processes. You will be amazed to know that the ground you are standing on is slowly moving. Within the earth, a continuous movement is taking place. The first or the internal process leads to the upliftment and sinking of the earth's surface at several places. To make you understand in a simple manner, I want you to watch this video. So as you can see from the clip, how the major continents coinciding and moving away. This is also called continental drift, which happens after millions of years. In page 2, we'll read about the external process. It is nothing but the continuous wearing down and rebuilding of the land surface. So the wearing away of the earth's surface is called erosion. So you must be familiar with this term called erosion, which is uh, quite many times associated with soil erosion. The surface is being lowered by the process of erosion and rebuilt by the process of deposition. So the opposite of erosion is always deposition. So just think of it this way. If something is being eroded, it will be deposited somewhere. And the means by which this too happens is carried out usually by running water, ice and wind. So these three are the major uh, transportation or means by which erosion and deposition happen. And this process done over several years makes a huge impact which is nothing but huge elevations and slopes and those elevation and slopes are called mountains plateaus and plains depending on the height so in page 3 we'll read about uh, different types of mountains so there are three types of mountains which is fold mountains and block mountains and volcanic mountains Let's read about fold mountains. The Himalayan mountains and the Alps are young fold mountains. And Arav Aravali range in India is one of the oldest fold mountain systems in the world. And some of the old mountains are the Ural mountains, which is between Asia and Europe. And then Appalachians in North America, they are old fold mountains. Now let's read about block mountains. They're created when large areas are broken and displaced vertically. So if you look at the picture you can see how some of the land masses are going down and some are going up so this is how they are forming a block sort of a thing so here you can see one and then two and then three blocks so most of such example you'll get to see in Europe there the mountain systems are in such a fashion and therefore you'll see a lot of block mountains in Europe now coming to volcanic mountains they are formed due to volcanic activity a fine example would be Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa and Mount Fujiyama in Japan so what are the usage of mountains? The mountains are storehouse of water. So due to their altitude, many of the rivers have their source in the glaciers in the mountain. And then by civilization, people like us make reservoirs that are made and the water is harnessed for the use of people. And since the water comes at a very steady pressure from above the mountain, it can also be used for irrigation and generation of hydroelectricity. And some of the valleys around the mountain are ideal for cultivation of crops. Mountains have a rich variety of flora and fauna. The forest provide fuel, fodder, shelter and other products. So quickly let me tell you what are fold mountains. They are mountains that are formed mainly by the effects of folding on layers within the part of the earth crust. And block mountains are mainly formed by natural faults in the earth's crust. So one part of the earth crust gets submerged down and the other stays at its position and that is how the block mountains are. Formed. This is usually due to the drifting of the second layer that is the mantle of the earth. Just imagine it this way. If there is a circle and the inner circle drifts inside, the upper will slide inside, right? So with a similar example, that's how the block mountains are formed. And volcanic mountains are formed when that molten rock, which is the ma magma inside the earth core, that comes out uh, within the earth and it erupts and piles upon the surface. You must have seen volcano, how the magma comes out of it and flows all around it. And when it flows like a river, it's a very hot stuff. So when it 
cools down, it forms an extra layer on the Earth's crust. And those layers are so huge that it goes on to form volcanic mountains. That's how volcanic mountains are formed. In page 4, we'll read about plateaus. A point to remember, a plateau is an elevated flat land. It is a flat topped table land. So remember this table land. Plateau is nothing but a table land. Again, plateaus like mountains may be young and old. The Deccan Plateau is in India is one of the oldest plateau. So Deccan Plateau is the oldest plateau. Just remember this Deccan. The word has been derived from a long time ago. So that's why old and Deccan can be related. The East African Plateau in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda and the Western Plateau of Australia are other examples. So they all are old plateaus. Remember, the Tibet Plateau is the highest plateau in the world with a height of 4000 to 600, 6000 meter. And plateaus are very useful because they are rich in mineral deposit. As a result, many of the mining areas in the world are located in the plateau areas. Have a look at this picture. So you see how this land is. Uh, everything is uh, like solid and standing like a table. So if you see the walls of the plateau, you can see the various layers beneath it. So that's how you also mine coals. So when you, when you see a coal mining site, usually there are like huge plateau and you can see a huge line of uh, coal passing through in between and that's how you need to extract those minerals and and that's an altogether different story how to extract those minerals but what i'm trying to say is that it usually looks like this block block of mountain wherein uh, you can see from sideways you can see the various layers of, on the bed of that plateau page five so African Plateau is famous for gold and diamond mining. In India, huge reserves of iron, coal and manganese are found in Chota Nagpur Plateau. Remember this, Chota Nagpur Plateau is famous for iron, coal and manganese. We'll also see many uh, waterfalls near the plateau areas. As the river falls from a greater height in India, the Hondru Falls in the Chota Nagpur Plateau on the river Subar Narekha and the Jok Falls in Karnataka are example of such waterfalls. Then we also have something called a lava plateau that are rich in black soil that are fertile. So the lava plateau is derived from again the volcanic eruption of magma that flowed from the volcanoes. It formed a layer of thin crust on the earth's surface and that crust is nothing but a lava plateau and those are usually very fertile and good for cultivation. So many plateaus have scenic spots and are of great attraction to tourists. Now we'll go to plains. Plains are a large stretch of flat land. They are generally not more than 200 meters above the mean sea level. And most of the plains are formed by rivers and their tributaries. So when a river flows, it takes away all the soil and mud with it, right? And that's how a plain surface is formed usually. So quite a lot of time if you see, uh, when you see a place where the river is totally dried out and you can see that bed of that river, it's, it's, it's a complete long stretch of flat land. And we have also seen that uh, a lot of stones and sand are deposited along the course in their valley. So many rivers have these stone and sand boundary sort of a thing uh, along their side. It is from these deposit that plains are formed. Generally plains are very fertile. Construction of transport network is easy. Thus these plains are very quickly populated regions of the world. Some of the largest plains made by the river are found in Asia, North America, for example, Asia. These plains are formed by the Ganga and the Brahmaputra in India and the Yangtze in China. Plains are the most useful areas for human habitation. This is a great concentration of people so more flat land is available for building houses as well as cultivation. This is a very self-explanatory sentence. So as you can see from the picture how people are um, engaged in their agricultural activity which is on a flat land. So had it been a, a bouncy up and down it would be difficult to carry out this kind of irrigation. The water would not be stable at one place and etc etc. Now page 6 talks about landforms and the people. Humans are living on different kinds of landforms in different ways. Life is difficult in mountainous areas. A lot of natural calamities such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, storms and flood causes widespread destruction. That's why you must have heard right when you stay in a hilly area there the houses are to be built with wood and not with concrete because that place is in a risk of causing earthquake or any kind of natural calamity and it would be very difficult. So you can see the fine example of Uttarakhand. Now quite often we use the land in a wasteful manner. For example constructing houses on a fertile land. Similarly we throw garbage on land or in water making them dirty. 
Uh, you can see this picture on the right side how the water area is usually very dirty all the pollutant all the home garbage home uh, sanitary and um, drainage pipes are let out open in the river and that's how the rivers are getting polluted and those rivers carry that pollution to other places and etc and that's how the entire cycle of dirt happens yeah and going to the next page that is the seventh page you have full of pictures pictures so there's nothing much to see. All these pictures are very self-explanatory. And that's it. We have finished our chapter. And let's come to the final page to do some exercise. So first question, what are the major landforms? The major landforms are mountain, plateau and plains. We will see this in the second page. So just go back to the second page and you will see the answer. The major landforms are mountain, plain and plateau. Second question, what is the difference between a mountain and a plateau? One is high, one is small. I'm just kidding. So a mountain is a natural elevation of a earth surface and they are usually huge. And there are different types of mountains such as block mountain, fold mountain and volcanic mountain. And plateau on the other hand is a large deposition of plain lands and they are not as tall as mountains but they are they, they generally range from 600 to some few thousand meters if we, we have read that before right so that is the difference between mountain and plateau third question what are the different types of mountains so the different type of types of mountains are fold mountain volcanic mountain and block mountain fourth question how are the mountains useful to a man? So mountains are useful to a man because a lot of water flows through it because when a mountain is high and with, with increase of altitude we have a lot of um, cold associated with it and then we have glacier formation and when they melt down it comes down as a as a huge um, channel of water and water is useful for man and that's how the, a lot of um, economic activities takes place something like irrigation or or any kind of um, habitation etc near the water area is formed so mountains are useful in that sense and 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 running water also carry a lot of natural resources so those resources are useful to a man fifth question how are plains formed so plains are formed usually by running water so when a when a river runs for a continuous period of time that place gets eroded and all the soil is taken away with the running water as a result it leaves behind a plain so that's how the plains are formed why are the rivers plain thickly populated hmm so river plains are thickly populated because usually the plains that are formed by rivers are very fertile for cultivation, for irrigation purpose. And as a result, a lot of population resides besides it because uh, they not only get to do their job and they also get to have the uh, important aspect of human life, that is the water. So these are the quick answers behind why are the rivers plains thickly populated. And the last question. Why are mountains thinly populated? So mountains are not an ideal place to stay because a lot of natural calamities are bound to happen such as earthquake, uh, land drift or any kind of a major uh, cloud burst etc. So that's why these places are not very highly populated. So coming to the next form of questions. So coming to the next question. The mountains differ from the hills in terms of elevation Yeah, because they are like straight up there and slopes are nothing but it's easy it's easy to climb a hill but it's it can be difficult to climb a mountain and that's because of the elevation because it's straight up there glaciers are found in mountains because the higher you go the colder the place is and mountains are higher than plains and plateau the Deccan plateau is located in India the river Yangtze flows in China remember there's Yang all these sort of names are famous in China. An important mountain range of Europe is? That's a good question. The Andes is located in South America. Alps. It has to be Alps. With this, we have come to an end of another chapter in geography. Thank you guys for listening and I hope you found this useful. Make sure to subscribe. Bye.